Okay, today we're going to be changing the spark plugs on the 2009 Corvette LS3 engine. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's something you can do at home. You only need a few tools to do it, and these are much easier to get out than the uh, LS1 engine. So I'm going to walk you through the steps and show you what you need. Okay, so these are the what we're going to need to do the uh, spark plug chains. Have uh, eight spark plugs. These are the uh, AC Delco Professional Iridium spark plugs. These were on sale and had a rebate, so that's a pretty good deal on those. Need the uh, socket, the spark plug socket with a small extension and your ratchet. Uh, might need the spark plug boot puller there. And we're also going to put some anti seize um, on the uh, threads and a little bit of the dielectric grease in the spark plug boots to make those slide off better next time. So this is the new Iridium spark plug we're going to be installing. Uh, these come gapped at uh, 0 0.040, so uh, you can double check them again if you want. I'm going to check mine before I put them in. All right, so the spark plugs are all gapped. Just need to take the uh, fuel rail cover off here. We're going to start on the passenger side, so we'll take the oil cap off. Then we're just going to lift up on um, here and you should feel it release. And then there's a couple clips underneath the front and we can just pull those up gently and the whole fuel rail cover should come off. Alright, so if we start here, um, we're going to take I find it's a little bit easier to pull this off the top, even though you don't really need to. We're going to take each one of these off one at a time and then work our way to the back. So if we take the spark plug boot puller here and just give it a little bit of a twist and then pull down. Don't pull on the wire, always pull on the boot until you feel that get loose there. Then we need to reach down in here and pull this out. And if you, same thing, kind of give it a little bit of a twist. Grab the boot and not the wire until so you can pull it out. And you can see that uh, the whole thing came out like this. It's got the um, heat shield on it. You can pull the heat shield off and here's the boot. So we're going to set that aside, and then we're going to take our socket and pull the spark plug out. So if we have the small spark plug socket, now we can reach down in here and get this spark plug out. Once it's loose, you can just twist it out. So this is the first cylinder where I have the socket now. And here's the other three. So you can see the spark plugs are made down here, here, and then the last one on this side, right here. Okay, so here's the old spark plug I pulled out. It doesn't look too bad, but I'm going to go ahead and replace it. The first thing we're going to do is put some anti-seize on the threads. Just kind of put a little bit on there and spin it around on the threads. This will be a lot easier to get out next time you have to change the plugs. And I'm going to go ahead and thread that in. The other thing I'm going to do is just put a little bit of the dielectric grease in the end of the boot here so that slides in nicely and a little bit on this one too and that'll keep the boot soft for next time we change those i'm going to do that on each one of these um, i'm not going to walk through every single spark plug unless there's one that's a little bit different or harder to take out than the others
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this, got this spark plug ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here by hand. Now the important thing is not to cross thread the spark plug. So you wanna be able to put it in very, it should go in real easily. When you start threading it in there, if it doesn't go in super easy, then you wanna take it out and put it in so you can spin in there by hand very easily until you get it all the way in. And then once you get it in there, you're going to torque it down gently, not too much. You don't want to over torque the spark plugs. So the spark plugs in there. I'm just going to put the spark plug boot back on with the heat shield back on there. Slide this on the spark plug first. And make sure you get it right over the end of it. it should and it has to be pushed in all the way. It should slide all the way in there. And so if you, if you give it a little, a gentle tug, it shouldn't come out. So once it seats in there, then you can seat the part that goes on the coil pack. And you hear a little bit of a click when it goes in there. Now I'm going to walk through the same thing on each one of my other spark plugs. Same process, and unless any of them is different, then I'll show that part of the video. So the passenger side is done. They were all pretty much the same. It's just a little bit hard to see the second one here that's underneath the dipstick. And it's a little bit hard to see the last one in the back. They're not that hard to get through. The same extensions work. Uh, it's just a little bit hard to see, but you can still get them out pretty easily. The only thing we have to do on this side now is just reinstall the fuel rail cover. So I'm going to take the oil cap back off. Set this in here. And again, I want to clip the top clips on first, get it lined up. You should feel those clip, these two clips here, you can see those, this one here and this one over here are going to clip onto the fuel rail. So that's really, you can feel underneath where they're supposed to go. Even though you can't see them, you kind of have to feel underneath here. And feel them seat on there, and then you push in the bottom ones, and you feel feel those seat in there. There, and then when you push down, you should feel a little bit of a thump on each corner as you push all four things down, and put your cap back on. Okay, so now we're going to move over to the driver's side. On the driver's side, we're going to do basically the same thing. It's got clips underneath here and pull up here. The only thing different is here where we're going to have to make sure that we uh, kind of open up. There's a slot in the fuel rail cover. So you're going to have to kind of like lift up and work it around that hose. And you don't want to pinch the hose. So what I ended up doing, uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, one way is to actually remove the fuel line and just thread it through the hole. Um, I have the fuel line disconnect tool, but it was not coming off easily. So what I did is put some painter's tape on the fuel line, uh, fuel rail cover to keep it from getting scratched. And um, Make sure you don't do this when it's cold because the plastic might crack. But what I ended up doing is pulling up this side of it and pushing down on this side just enough to get the uh, fuel line through the, through the slot there. So I had to pull up and you can see there's just enough room to get it through there. Uh, so I was able to get that off. The uh, driver's side really is pretty much the same as the passenger's side. They're all pretty easy to get to. You can see this is the first one. Uh, might have a little bit of trouble with this one because it's 
hidden behind the um, alternator, so I'm going to have to take that plug off there. Um, that one's easy, and the rest of these look pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start with this first one and see if I can get that off or if I need to remove that um, connector down there. Go ahead and take that out. See, if I reach down in here, you can see this connector here. I'm going to pull that off and just kind of pull it out of the way, and that'll make this uh, first boot easier to pull off. Other than that, I think they're all pretty straightforward. I finished doing all four on the driver's side. The only thing that was different was on these two, these last two, I did use a little bit different extension, actually a universal joint, so I could clear this connector and also this one down under here just to make it a little bit longer just to clear the brake booster um, but other than that it really is the same tools so all I have to do now is um, put the fuel rail cover back on um, the same way I took it off and uh, it should slide on there just the same so I, so the only thing I would caution is when you're putting these on make sure that you feel um, a slight uh, connection a quick connection on both ends of the uh, spark plug wires to make sure it's seated properly and that's it. Uh, you can check out my other videos or subscribe to my channel.